so, the ancient religion of Babylon, they all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. Ishtar, the Babylonians, Tyre, the Buddhism, Fatima, Muhammad, Sophia, the Gnostics, Shekinah to the Kabbalist Jew, Mary to the Catholic, and Shakti to the Hindu. These all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is going to take you back to the source of light. Because the light that resides in that place that Plato talked about, you need a path to get back to that light. Listen, this is important. She is the one to take you to that light. Now, I'm going I'm to give you a guess. Tell me this morning, who do you think that light is? You remember what this subject's all about? Lucifer. He's... Okay, folks, I want to show you something. This video is going to be very comprehensive. Uh, there's going to be a lot of unbelievable... Guys, you know what? I'm just going to talk to you like you're in my living room. This is going to blow you away. I mean, I can't stand on ceremony right now. I, just, I can't try and appeal to any audience. I just got to be me. This is going to blow your freaking minds. <laughs> Forget the spatulas, man. Go get a front-end loader. You're going to need something to get your jaw up off the ground. So let's do it. Let me show you something. Sophia to the Gnostics. It's all mother goddess worship. Look at this. Uh, let me show you some. Look how it says, goddess of wisdom. Look at the letter W. Remember in the twin system like Cain and Abel, the, the enemy likes to use the letter W because it represents a double U. A good you and a bad you, five and five, and they bring them together to make the letter W. Watch. So I can take this this Roman numeral V, that Roman numeral V, and I'll slide these two together, and it makes the letter W, and it represents a good you and a bad you, a double you, like a Cain and Abel you, a cannibal you. Uh, this is a perfect example right here. The double that this is no different than the double-headed phoenix. When I'm showing you this image of these two twins, that's what the double-headed phoenix really represents. It is the good you and the bad you. It represents the double you. That's what that represents. Let's shove this up into this folder right here. Uh -oh, let's see if this is gonna work. Here we go. Look at look at the goddess of wisdom. Look at the letter W right there. See? The letter W for goddess of wisdom. See the W? Okay, now let me show you something else. Let me shrink this down. Okay, Sophia, goddess of wisdom. Shekinah. Shekinah, renowned harmonic vocalist in the language of light. Look at this star right here, okay? What's very apparent is the bright, the brightest blue. 
There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an eight pointed star. I've shown you repetitively. Eight pointed star is Venus, Lucifer, morning star. Okay, so it's all Lucifer. Shekinah. Okay, there's the morning star, Lucifer. Sophia. Uh, Sophia, wherever that went to, should be up here somewhere. Uh, here we go. Here's another one. Shekinah. God, the mother of Numa. It means that means a breath. I want you to look at this. I've shown you the symbology before. This is the womb, the matrix. Okay, and this is this represents the phases of the moon, and this is made manifest in what's called the triple moon goddess, waxing full and waning moons. And it's the life cycle, and it has to do with the menstrual cycle of a female. It's this is all tied together, so just be patient and watch. Guys, you're not going to believe the data that's going to get blown out today. I'm going to start right now with some of it, just to give you an example. We'll start with ESORT. Ready? Someone left a comment the other day on one of the videos and said, Have you read Psalm 23, what the word valley is? And I actually went to Psalm 23 in ESORT, and I had previously highlighted the entire thing uh, on one on one verse. And I had done this when I was doing a Bible study a long time ago, but I didn't realize how important it was going to be. And the person that left that comment, awesome, thank you, it reminded me. Let me show you what it says in Psalm 23. Okay, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Look at the word valley, get ready. The word valley means by transmutation. Arrogance, pride, the person, body. So, yea, though I walk through the valley, the word valley is person, body, transmutation, pride. Because your host body, and I've been telling you this, the Bible's going to prove this out every time now. Because now that the mystery is resolved, all you have to do is go redo your scriptures and look at the definitions of the words, and it will always prove out. There are so many things that are exploding right now. I'm not kidding. I can't keep up with all of them. I've got so many things that I just can't keep up with. There's too many. My jaw is just hanging open. Okay, yea, though I walk through the valley, it means by transmutation, the human host body of death, shade, death, figuratively calamity, which is what happened to us. Look what it means. Concretely, the dead, their place or state, Hades. So this just proved it out again. Though I walk through the valley again, by transmutation, the human body pride of the shadow of death, the shade of death. Now remember, all the stuff I show you is hidden in the shadows. All the drawings I do, all the hidden images, even, you know, the pendant I showed you of the Orm Hoxon witch pendant. That's called the shadow arts, people. Egyptians were masters of the shadow arts. They'll have a shadow on something, but the shadow is really another line creating another image that they don't want you to see. Only those that are in the know can see them. But today we're going to destroy. Well, when I say destroy... I'm going to let you see through the set of lenses the Lord God's given me. You'll be able to see what he's shown me, and you're not going to believe what you're going to see today. <laughs> I mean, look at what you're looking at right now. I mean, you're looking at Psalm 23. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley by transmutation, host body. It says body, the shadow of death, the shade of death, figuratively calamity place or state Hades, pestilence, ruin. I will fear no evil, bad, evil, distress. Okay, so, thou preparest a table before me and look, the presence of mine enemies. Look at the word presence, part opposite, 
How many times have I told you everything's about this? Right side up, upside down. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence, the part opposite, in the presence of mine enemies, the part opposite. Because that presence, you know, when God is working through us and fixing us, when he restores us, he prepared a table in the presence of your enemy, the part opposite, the presence, part opposite of mine enemies. There it is. Unbelievable. Enemies. Look at this. To cramp. Think of two in one body. Be in. To be like be in you. Affliction. To bind up. Yep. And that's what happened to us. We were bound up. We were shut in. Yeah. And we were cramped in this one body with something else. And this is just all making total sense now. Otherwise, without this understanding, none of these definitions would make sense. Without knowing what we know, none of those definitions would make any sense. But now they all make sense. Okay, so now let's keep going. So since I just showed you Psalm 23, the word, tran the word valley means transmutation in human body and pride. Well, let's look at the word transmutation itself because, again, I told you that the host body system is made manifest in the hendecogram that the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of. So, let's look at transmutation. It means the conversion or transformation of one species into another. The action or changing or the state of being changed into another form. And that transmutation is very simply an angel from heaven in, if into a human host body system that is the transmutation device. It is the vehicle for transmuting that angel. So you get the angel caught in the vehicle. You get the angel caught in the transmutation device, which is the human host body. That's why the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of a hendecogram, which is a transmutation circle standing right on it so you get the angel caught in that host body and then you change it to something else and you change it to a race of beings that's coming out of the pit locust so here's the here's the system angel to human to locust that's it angel the transmutation device human to locust that's it and i'm going to prove this out repetitively again you're going to see so much new data you may have an anxiety attack. You'll probably start laughing uncontrollably because you're going to know how busted they are. You're going to know that they're all around you and that you are being led to the slaughter. Anyone here at Burning Man? Y'all know what the Burning Man Festival is? I've covered it several times. Now I know exactly what it is. Even though previously I've covered it, now I know exactly what it is. And so will you. By the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what the Burning Man Festival is. Let me tell you something else you're going to know. You're going to know what the symbology on the dollar bill is. A lot of people for, I mean, just go type into Google images. I mean, go type into Google, you know, symbology of the one dollar bill. There are thousands of videos. No one's got it right. No one. I haven't seen one that has it correct. Do you believe me? I'm going to show you what it really is. Because once you know the system... Once you know what we just saw and read in Psalm 23, once you know what transmutation is all about, once you know what a hendecogram is, once you know their mechanism for destroying us, once you know how they, Satan and the fallen, how that hierarchy is trying to destroy us, once you know how they're doing it, then when you see them doing it, it's like, oh, pfft, there it is. It's a no-brainer. Watch. We're going to do... The Burning Man Festival, I'm going to show you how it's no different than the $1 bill. Do you believe that? Burning Man is the same as the $1 bill. Burning Man is the same as Citra Accra and the Hindecogram. Burning Man is no different than the United Nations. Burning Man is no different than most courthouses you walk into. Yeah. You know I won't say it unless I can prove it. Because it's not me proving it. The Lord gives me so much data I almost can't. 
process it all, guys. That's why some days it takes me two to three days to do a video because I'm like, ah. It's just like, ah. This is overwhelming. So here we go. Let's keep going. Transmutation, the action, the action of changing or the state of being changed into another form. The conversion or transformation of one species to another. Psalm 23. So he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesakes. Though I walk through the valley, transmutation and what pride. Look, lifting up pride, human host body, the person body, because that's how we are transmuted. You took angels that were pure, the purity of the Lord God. You get them caught in a system that's prideful and arrogant. You transmute them. They die. They don't get converted. They go to the, the pit for, for food. Race of locusts. Because their king is the angel of the bottomless pit, Apollyon. Okay, so here we go. We just proved that out. Okay, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to play. I'm going to give you a couple definitions, and then after these definitions, I want you to read them. Don't just listen to me. I want you to read them with your own eyes. Very important. You, something else happens in your brain when you actually read it out loud. Read it with your own mouth. Read it with your own eyes. Process it through your own brain because it changes than just listening to me say it. I'm going to give you the definitions after I give you the definitions. I put together a very short little video with Dave. I'm going to play the video. It's about the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life. And you'll see it bleed over into the new Burning Man Festival that's going on right now. Okay, so let's let's do that next. Ready? Sitra Akra and the Kelepot. I want okay, I want you to just understand the word kelepot, say it, equals host body. Kelepot equals host body. Kelepot equals shell, husk, or peel. Like the peel around a fruit, and it protects the fruit that's within. Okay, well, we have a kelepot. This is, this is my kelepot, my host body. It's in Jewish cosmology, Kabbalah. That's what they call the host body. Once you understand this, you're, no one's going to be able to fool you or trick you. You'll be able to see through their ridiculous disguises now. It's so easy now. Watch. Kelipot. It's pronounced Kelipot, like K-E-L-I-P-O-T. It's Hebrew. Okay. It literally means peels, shells, or husk. And it's uh, in red, it says, from the singular Kelipot, husk are the representation, so your body is the representation of evil or impure spiritual forces. Okay, those evil or impure spiritual forces in Jewish mysticism are the polar opposites of the Holy Sephira, which means emanations of God. That realm of evil or impure spiritual forces, the realm, the realm of evil, of evil or impure spiritual forces, the realm is called Sitra Akra, Aramaic, and it means the other side, opposite, opposite, opposite holiness. So the Sitra Akra is the realm of evil or impure forces like darkness, okay, the evil and the darkness from the other side. Okay, y'all got that? Let's do our next definition. Remember, Kelepot is host body. Host body is Kelepot, okay? So now let's look at the next definition. Let's see. Come on. Quick. There we go. So we're going to go into. There we go. Well, I'm going to get it more crisp. In Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology. Now, before I continue, I'm going to shut down any of the trolls. I am exposing Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology as mother goddess worship, no different than the Catholic Church, no different than all the other 
mentions in the short little video that was before this. It is all Mother Goddess, it's all evil, and it's all the other side. It is the opposite of the male energy, it's the female. It is the opposite. In Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology, the Kelepot are metaphorical shells. Okay, so see? The Kelepot are shells surrounding holiness, which is your soul. They are spiritual obstacles receiving their existence from God only in external rather than internal manner. Divinity in Judaism connotes revelation of God's true unity while the shells, which is your host body, conceal holiness as a peel conceals the fruit within. They are therefore synonymous with idolatry. Okay, we're going to get back from that one in just a minute. The Kelepot is synonymous with idolatry. Your host body is synonymous with idolatry. I'll say it again. Your host body is synonymous with idolatry in the Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology. Now look at Genesis 126 in the Bible because our Bible is going to shine light on all the lies, all the hidden stuff, and the Bible is going to make manifest and shine light on all the darkness right now. And we're going to expose everything. Watch. Just watch. And Elohim, that is not the Lord God. Elohim, it is plural. It means gods. It means of the supreme God. It means magistrates, and it means angels, judges. So gods, and I want to be clear so people understand this it's not just gods a bunch of them it's the cumulative sum of those gods they are many in one they are e pluribus many out of one which was lucifer okay they are many out of one so that's why it's plural and god elohim gods that are of the supreme god angels and magistrates said let us make look at this word hebrew word 120 adam i want you to look at this way and i want you to understand this number of this word this is going to be so important this is going to go to the burning man festival so make sure you understand this right now okay so elohim said the cumulative sum of a bunch of gods said, let us make man, Hebrew word, 120, let us make man, uh, look at what it says, Adam, it's Adam, okay, but it's not the same as the word when the Lord God made Adam, that's Hebrew word 121, it's a different word, but watch this, let us make man in our representative figure especially an idol so the cumulative sum of a bunch of gods angels and magistrates said let us make man Adam a human being hypocrite in our representative figure especially an idol I don't know if you understand what we just did right here. We just proved that in the Kabbalistic cosmology, the Kabbalah that worships Lucifer, we just proved that their host body system is is right in line with, with what the Bible says. See, they worship Lucifer as having made the host body, and they call it the tree of life. For us that are really saved, it's the tree of death. Do you not know those who try and save their life will lose it? Did you you know your there's not one good, not even one? Did you know your host body is your own enemy? It is your evil reflection destroying you. That's what it is. Now we just proved it. Look. Elohim said, the cumulative sum of God's angels and magistrates said, Let us make man, Adam, a human being, hypocrite, in our representative figure especially an idol I'm gonna change the color of that to bright bright yellow there it is 
a representative figure, especially an idol. So in Genesis 126, that's Elohim making a representative figure, which is an idol, and the name of that thing is called man. There's no way out of it. So they did create them. Here it is. Here's where the whole system started, opposing male and female. So they did create them in the image, look, in the image of Elohim, a representative figure, especially an idol. Image, in the image, a representative figure, especially an idol, of Elohim, created he him male and female, created he them. You see that little he? Do you, do you think you know who that is? He, it's Lucifer. That's who it is. Because he is that cumulative sum of Elohim. That's what it is. It, this is just going to blow your minds. In Jewish Kabbalistic cosmology, the Kelepot, or the host body system, are metaphorical shells. So that's what a man is. A man is a shell. Surrounding holiness, they are spiritual obstacles receiving their existence from God only in an external rather than internal manner. Divinity in Judaism connotes revelation of God's true unity, while the shells, man, the, or the man, while man conceals holiness as a peel conceals the fruit within. They are therefore synonymous with idolatry, represented figure, especially an idol. The root of impurity through ascribing false dualism. See, they are the root of impurity. So the host body system is the root of impurity through ascribing false dualism in the divine and with the sitra akra, the realm of evil from the other side. The Shekinah, okay, let me explain something to you about the Shekinah. The Shekinah means like dwelling place and it's feminine. In Kabbalistic cosmology, Shekinah is Mother Goddess. Again, that's why that little video I showed you, I'll show it to you again. Pay attention. The Shekinah is separated in creation from the Sephirot by man's sins. Sephirot means the emanations of God. While divinity is exiled in the Kelepot. Why do you think the Statue of Liberty is called the Mother of Exiles and she's standing on top of a kelepot? Stop. The Statue of Liberty, Eleutheria, licentious freedom, is standing on top of a kelepot, a man. A kelepot is a man. It's a host body. The Statue of Liberty, the Mother Goddess holding the penis in her hand with the imprisoned lightning, is standing on top of your host body system. Wow. Divinity is exiled in the Kelepot. That's why the Statue of Liberty is called the Mother of Exiles from the prior initial catastrophe and creation. This causes sparks of holiness, which is all of us, to be exiled in the Kelepot. The Bible says, and I quote, live out the time of your exile in fear of the Lord. Watch. Okay, here you go. 1 Peter 2.11. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens, because we're the aliens, it's their planet. I urge you as aliens and exiles to keep uh, on abstaining, you know, um, from those things that war against your soul. Uh, here we go. 1 Peter 1.17. Yes, live out your lives in reverent fear as exiles. So we are exiles, guys. And if you call, if you if you call on the Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile. 
divinity is exiled in the kelepot. This causes sparks of holiness to be exiled in the kelepot. Why do you think the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of the kelepot? Because a bunch of angels took their licentious freedom. Now, let me show you something. This is going to blow your mind. You must understand your definitions before you can continue and understand all this. Okay, so here you go. Here's one more definition. Then I'm going to play two little videos back to back that Dave and I created for you guys. I just want you to listen to the videos. Now, again, I am exposing the Kabbalah for what it is. They know what's going on, but they're your slave masters. They're your taskmasters. Uh, that's why there's people that wear shirts that with little lambs that I showed you the other day. And it says, end me. Why would you wear a shirt with a baby lamb that says, end me, like end all the baby lambs? And on the back of the shirt, it says, seduced, accused, destroyed. Unless you're one of them, uh, you have to be. You can't wear that shirt. You can't wear a shirt with a baby lamb that says, end me, that says, seduced, accused, destroyed, without being one of them, without being part of their system because that consciousness has taken over those host bodies and they're functioning you know agents to lead others to the slaughter and we're led to the slaughter now watch okay the kelepotic tree of life the kelepotic tree consists of 10 spheres in opposition to the sephirot okay the sephirot means the 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 emanations of god so the kelepotic tree is in opposition, the kelepotic tree is in opposition to the sephirot. The sephirot is the emanations of God, like God's, you know, character, the emanations of God. But the tree, which is your kelepot, your host body, is in opposition to that. Do you understand? It is a metaphorical shell that is inherently evil, that is housing sparks of holiness that have been exiled. That's why the Statue of Liberty is called the Mother of Exiles. And she's holding a penis that's got the imprisoned lightning. Nobody knew this about the Statue of Liberty, did they? <laughs> yes, like, no. The Kelepotic tree consists, consists of 10 spheres in opposition to the sphere on the tree of life. These are also referred to as evil twins. They are also evil demons of matter and the shells of the dead. Oh, wow. You mean like evil twins, like I've been showing you. Wow, they're twins, like Cain and Abel, Cainable, because this is what's inside your head. Cain and Abel, Cainable. One good and one bad, and it makes a double U, a good U and a bad U, a right side up U and an upside down U. Until you're converted and your eye becomes single, and the only way to get your eye single is to have a union because your eyes are opposites. One's good, one's bad. So you have this system where there's one good eye, one bad eye. And then unless your eye becomes single and is unified with the other eye, you will go to the pit. Watch. I'm going to prove it. Let's take the let's take the Bible. Watch this. Quick, we'll take Esword. We'll go to Matthew. We'll go to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23. And the light, and the light of the body is the eye. The light, it means portable lamp or the illuminator of the body. It means the body, and it means the slave. See, look, body slave, like kelepot, uh, exiles, is the, okay, the light of the body is the eye, okay? It means the eye, literally or figuratively, by implication, vision. Okay, if therefore thine eye be single, told you, as a particle of union. I See, I, I've been telling you all this. I just went and looked all this up the other day. See, your eyes are double, but for your eye to be single, they've got to be unified. One can't be right side up and the other one upside down. It's got to be 
you got to go, oh, wait, let me take this image of the Virgin and turn it upside down. <gasps> it's a dead sheep. Who's the dead sheep? You're the dead sheep. See, look, if thine eye be single, the word single means as a particle of union, properly folded together. Let me do that again. Told you. And now all these definitions of the scriptures and these words make sense. Otherwise, that would make no sense. If thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Lustrous, that is transparent, well illuminated. Light, luminous. But if thine eye be evil, okay, see it, it says evil, look, hurtful, that is evil. Then the whole body shall be full of darkness. Okay, opaque, that is benighted, dark, full of darkness. The citra akra is the evil realm of, of evil or impure spiritual forces from the other side in its darkness. That's why the Bible says, if the light in you is darkness, how great the darkness. Yep, look, here it is. Therefore, if the light... The light, and this is, look at this word right here for light. This is not the same word as light up here. The light of the body is the eye. The word light right there is portable lamp or illuminator. Therefore, if the light in thee be darkness, look at the word light here, to shine, make manifest, fire or light, that the, is in thee be darkness, shadiness, dark, darkness, obscurity, then how great is the darkness? Do you understand? Because the Sitra Akra and, and the and the Kelepot, that is the book of the dark light. I'm going to show it to you. It's called the book of the dark light. Because your body is housing that thing. You're in touch with it. You got two things going on in one system. Two in one. I've been telling you all this. Okay, now that I've shown you that, that absolutely, if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light, but the eye's not single. Now, the Kelepotic tree consists of ten spheres in opposition to the emanations of God, the Sephirite, and the tree of life. These are referred to as evil twins, la, 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 right there. They're also called evil demons of matter and shells of the dead because the world of Matter, you know, things that are made of matter, matter is the evil world. Welcome to the devil's playground, folks. You're in it. Okay, now let's do this again. Now I'm going to show you two videos. I'm going to show you two videos back to back. They're going to be short, but I want you to see them so you can reprocess everything I just told you. And then we're going to launch into, we're going to launch into burning man and i'm going to show you the currency how it's identical to uh what the statue of liberty is standing on top of the u.s currency is identical to the citra acra and the hindecogram and the and the kelepot excuse me it's identical the burning man festival is identical the united nations is identical all of it i told you in the other video the lord's let us all the mystery of everything now. Here we go. The ancient religion of Babylon, they all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. The sacred feminine. Ishtar, the Babylonians, Tyre, the Buddhism, Fatima, of Muhammad, Sophia, the Gnostics, Shekinah to the Kabbalist Jews, Mary to the Catholic and Shakti to the Hindu. These all have one thing in common, the sacred feminine. And the sacred feminine is going to take you back to the source of light because the light that resides in that place that Plato talked about, you need a path to get back to that light. Listen, this is important. She is the one to take you to that light. Now, I'm going to give you a guess. 
tell me this morning, who do you think that light is? Do you remember what this subject's all about? Lucifer. He's Okay, now I'm going to tr translate this over now. The, the knowledge that you've, you've gleaned here, we're going to take that knowledge and we're going to transfer it to the Burning Man Festival. I'm going to play a short little video, but then we're going to go through this extensively. I'm talking, we're going to tie all of this together. By the time you're done with this video, you should be laughing, crying, throwing your arms in the air, praising God. You're going to freak out. You're going to freak out. This is unbelievable stuff. Okay, so let's watch this short little video clip on what they say this is all about. Okay, we're going to listen to them say what this is about. And then I'm going to show you, yes, this is what it's about. But since we're the strangers and the foreigners, we're, since we're the strangers and the foreigners in their land, I'm going to show you, yes, they're correct. This is what this is about. But we don't belong here. So that's the big, you know, that's why everything's backwards and upside down. Is because when you realize, wait a minute, I'm a foreigner here. I'm an alien here. I'm not supposed to be here. This is their planet. I'm just passing through. I got caught in a snare and that's what the Bible says now watch monument to nature it is a center for creation the tree of life is a hundred and ten foot monument to nature it is a center for creativity knowledge sharing and healing that has a life after burning man the goal of this project is to be the home of art and performance that inspires social and environmental change. And trees grow and incorporated natural principles of Fibonacci into the main structure. This gave us a repetition in the angles, which made it possible to construct in modules that can be pre-assembled. The design is split into four parts. There's a main structure made out of glue laminated timber and metal connectors, a walkway that takes you from the outside of the tree to a temple space at the top, a fabric facade with two faces incorporated and branches and leaves that forms a canopy for light shows and projections. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to pause that for a second now. I'm going to go back through this this part slowly and I'm going to show you some basic things you should be able to see by now on the construction of this year's theme is called the Tree of Life at the Burning Man Festival. Burning Man Festival. Okay, so here we go. Let's go back and let's watch this again. Okay, hang on, folks. Okay, here we go. Let me show you something. The trees grow. Okay, I want you to look at the top here. As it spins around, arguably, there's... Arguably, there's definitely 10, I believe there's 11 triangles to form a hindecagram at the top. There are two X's 
on opposing sides of the tree. Uh, female chromosome, X and X. There are opposing faces on the tree trunk. Okay, so I want to... The base of the tree is an eight-pointed star. It's just if you have eyes to see it. Watch. ...of Fibonacci into the main structure. This gave us a repetition in the angles, which made it possible to construct in modules that could be pre -assembled. Okay, there we go. Let's look at the base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the base of their tree is Lucifer. Okay, and then they have the trunk. What's the trunk got? It's got opposing faces. It's got this spiral staircase going to the top platform. Right here when you go around it and you count all the triangles, I counted them. I believe it's 11. Here we go. Watch. The design is split into four parts. There's a main structure made out of glue laminated timber and metal connectors, a walkway that takes you from the outside of the tree to a temple space at the top, a fabric okay, facade with two A fabric facade with two phases. See the big open X here? There's one on the other side. Faces two faces, see the big X? Female chromosome. And branches and there it is. There's an X on both sides. Okay, there you go. X on both sides. And this year's theme at the burning man, because I told you we're being burned as fuel. Why do you think the Statue of Liberty has a flame that's called the imprisoned lightning? And that flame is on top of a penis. And she's standing on top of the host body, which is the Kelepot, which houses sparks of holiness that have been exiled. I mean, are you kidding me? Who could come up with this stuff? Nobody. It's like, ah, it's all true. That's what's so crazy. It's just unbelievable. Let's keep watching this now.
All right. So what I did, what I wanted to, the purpose of that was to give you some of the data points in just a video where you, you just see it yourself without me talking about it. I just wanted you to look at those images and just contemplate what the heck you're looking at. And the guys, this is the biggest news on the planet. This is the biggest news on planet Earth. There's no bigger news. There is, I don't know that there's been any bigger news as far as discovery and revelation. I've never seen it. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the Lord God. All glory to God. I didn't do this. I'm not this smart. Nobody is. Nobody could figure all this out and tie it all to the Bible. Nobody could. This is a gift, gift from God. So watch this. Let's do it. Okay, so now let's go to our folders. And let me show you some of the things that you are looking at. I want you to show, I want to sh make sure you understand what is in the center of a kelepot. That is essential. Okay, this is the representation of your host potty. It's called the kelepot. The peel, the shell, or the husk. It is inherently evil, housing the essence of holiness, which is your soul. Okay, but... You see it's an 11-pointed star, and there's two triangles at 12 o'clock right here. And down here, there's one at 6 o'clock. But what you really need to look at is what's in the dead center. Look right here. You have these interlocking right side up, right side up, upside down triangle. And it makes a hexagon. See the hexagon right there? And in the middle of the hexagon is a star. That represents you. That is you being transmuted. Have I not said you are gods? The word is Elohim. It's angels. Uh, you are all children of the Most High, but you shall fall like one of the princes. This represents a prince from heaven, a star. And this is the transmutation circle that it's in, which is this is, represents your host body, the right side up energy, the upside down energy that's got you trapped right in the middle. That represents you. And by the time it's done, that thing will be turned upside down. It will be an inverted star. And that is the church or the dwelling place of Satan. Okay, you've got to understand that. Now let me show you how this plays out in front of you all the time. You were just never aware of it. Okay, we're going to go look at, in just a minute, we're going to go look at the Burning Man. But first, I want to show you this, just a moment. Okay, now let's look at the symbology. I just showed you the kelepot, okay, right here. There's the kelepot. Okay, now, in the middle is, in the middle is a hexagram with a star in the middle. Let me show you, that represents you. You are that star, the very dead center that's what they're burning. Uh, okay, now remember, in the Bible, it says in Daniel 12, uh, in Daniel 12, it says, In the end, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those that turn many to righteousness as the stars. Look, the word stars means in the sense of blazing, a prince star. So if you're going to shine like the stars forever and ever, it means one of the princes from heaven because your glorified body is going to be light. It is not going to be this flesh. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So a star, look, a star right there is a prince. Okay, and that's why they use an image of a star in the middle of the hindecogram to make fun of us. Okay, so that represents you. See the star? Think prince. Okay, now let me just give you a little example of, of how this is made manifest in front of you all the time. Uh, anyone hear the band called Alice in Chains? Anyone know who Alice in Chains is? I'm going to prove this star thing out right in front of you. Watch. Okay, anyone who know, know who Alice in Chains is? Okay, it's a band, meaning of Alice, meaning of Alice, 
Alice means nobility. Nobility in chains. Get it? <laughs> We're the nobility that's in chains. That's why they named their band Alice in Chains. Why would you name your band Alice in Chains? Unless you're making fun of us. Those who rule my people mock them. Alice in Chains. Oh, nobility in chains. Oh, one of God's princes caught in a kelepot. Oh, that's right. Kelepots are what? Metaphorical shells housing what? Holiness, one of God's angels. Nobility in chains. Just like the Statue of Liberty with the chain on her feet strapped to the Hindecogram, the kelepot. Oh, this is starting to really make all kinds of sense now. Is the world making all kinds of sense now? Why would you name your band Alice in Chains? What about Alice in Wonderland? Nobility in Wonderland. How do you like Wonderland, folks? It sucks. Anyone who loves the world or the things of the world does not have the love of God in them. They have the other side in them. That's right. Alice in Chains. Okay, just wanted to prove it out. The meaning of Alice is of nobility, and we are of the king. So Alice in Chains means of nobility in chains. Oh, let's go back to our thing. Oh, you mean like the kelepot that houses the essence of holiness that is a shell that's got us trapped where we've been exiled in chains, everlasting chains of darkness. Now it's the time for another definition. Let's go to the Bible. Jude 1.6. Very important you know this. Here we go. And now we're off to the races. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath kept and reserved in everlasting chains of darkness. Look, the word everlasting, 126, right there. Ever enduring forward and backward. And then the word chains is ligaments of the body. Chains of darkness. The word chains, I'm going to show it to you, is ligaments of the body. I want you to see it with your own eyes. Oh, wow. Because those chains of darkness are your kelepots, your serpent skin, because you were born in serpent skin, folks. Here you go. Watch this. That's why he's got legal title deed to your body. Okay, chains right here. See the word chains? 1199. 1199. It means desmond, desmond, almost like a demon. It means ligament of the body or shackle of a prisoner. I'll say it again. Ligament of the body or shackle. So your ligaments is your shackles. Those are your shackles. How do you like them? Just use the Bible to prove your body is your chains of darkness right there. Now we're going to go to the Targum. And we're going to look at the Targum. And then we're just going to back engineer uh, everything. We're, we're going to back engineer everything right now. Get ready. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, and Adam called the name of his wife Hava, which is who the Catholics worship. They worship Eve, Mother Goddess. They all do, because she is the mother of all the children of men, and the Lord God made to Adam and his wife vestures of honor, and the word honor means to keep an agreement from the skin of the serpent which he had cast from him upon the skin of their flesh instead of that adornment which had been cast away, and he clothed them. So they lost their glorified bodies, and they got suits of serpent flesh right there. Absolutely correct. Why do you think the whole Vatican is a pregnant serpent? Why do you think uh, the, the cobblestones uh, make serpent flesh? Because the serpent that's wearing the crown, and I repeat, the word Vatican means divining serpent. Divining means prognosticating. Basically making the future happen as you want it. So see, the serpent in this world is making the future happen according to its will. But it's still under the will of the Lord God. And see, the serpent thinks he's winning. And then it's all going to be like the most horrifying poetic justice ever and it's going to happen boom and the the serpents kind of and the devils come down to you in great anger because he knows he has little time left and that's starting folks okay here we go so look you see serpent's bite it's a sperm going towards an apple reference to the garden of eden here is a pregnant serpent 
wearing a crown. That's called the Vatican divining serpent. Now let's just keep going. Here we go. We're going to knock this out of the park. The word government means governo, to control, mentis, the mind. Okay, here we go. Here are, here's ancient Egyptian, the disc of Ra. You have opposing serpents. Look, here's a serpent going one direction, one going backwards, and one going forwards. We'll call this one backwards because if this was an x-axis, x and y-axis, this would be forward and this would be backwards. Okay, so forward and backwards, chains of darkness. And this is the eye of Ra, the creator of of humanity in Egyptian theology. Now, let me show you what a transmutation circle. And then I'm going to just keep knocking these down. And we're going to end up at the U.S. currency. And we're going to end up at Burning Man Festival. Okay, you see these dragons that are facing opposite directions? Forward and backwards. What's in the middle? Oh, one of the stars. Okay, now let me show you what all this means. Here's a star which represents one of God's angels. See it right here? That represents an angel. That's what they put in the middle of the kelepot because a kelepot is a shell that's housing holiness. See, it's housing one of God's angels. Alice in Chains, nobility in chains. So there is an angel. Let's put the angel in. Boop. There's the angel. This is witchcraft at its finest, folks. This is the real deal right here. So there is a angel going in to the host body system, and now he's going to be transmuted. Now he's going to be transmuted into something else. Transmutation, the changing of one thing to another. Okay, here you go. So we just put the angel in, right? Okay, and then when you when once the kelepot turns upside down, the star turns upside down. And once the star turns upside down, what does it turn into? I'll click on that. And so once that star turns all the way upside down, it turns into that, doesn't it? So what was the temple of God? What, you know, what was, I'm sorry, one, one of God's angels became the temple of the devil. There it is. And all you got to do is turn it upside down. Because this is a transmutation circle. And the most important part of that transmutation circle is this right side up, upside down pyramid in the middle that makes a hexagon. That's where the term hex comes from. Like in witchcraft, I'm going to put a hex on her or put a hex on him. It's from that. Okay, now watch. So here is, here is a representation of one of God's stars. Blazing. Remember the word star in Daniel? It means in the sense of, look, star means in the sense of blazing, as shining, a prince, a star. Okay, that's what it means. Let's take, there it is right there. Now if we take this, and we just drop it in there. This will give you another visual representation. There you go. You put one of God's stars in the sense of blazing. And by the way, these images I'm using, I'm using their own images against them. These are from the Kabbalah. And this is it. I just am using their own stuff against them. It's a way to get them. So you put the, the prince in the middle of the kelepot. And then when it turns upside down... It be, when you turn the prince upside down, oops, it becomes the church of Satan. And so they're using the host body system to transmute an angel to the church of Satan. There it is. See it? Boom. That's just an upside down prince. Now, what do we got in the pit? Well, we have a bunch of, we have a bunch of locusts that are going to have. Hatch. Now, I find this fascinating that wasps nests and all these other nests that have insects, they have, and this is the same thing in the Vatican. This is why I'm using this, because in the Vatican, right above the altar where the big bug is harvesting semen, right above him, there's a bunch of honeycombs. 
I've shown you all that. There's honeycombs all down the hallways. They're everywhere, like a wasp nest, like a bee's nest. Well, check it out. I took one of these princes, and I just popped them right in one of those. There you go. Because that's the same thing as the center of a transmutation circle, isn't it? It's identical. Okay, why do you think the new clothing line, or the clothing line that's Obey, by the way, the artist that did Barack Obama's posters for his presidential candidacy is the same artist that did Obey. You see the right side up pentagram and the upside down pentagram, and it says Obey, and it's an Ouroboros. Give me a break. Their symbology gives them away now. They're, once you know how to read their symbology, they can't go redo all their symbology. They can't go hide it all now. It's too late. That's how they, this is the, this is a form of communication. They communicate through symbology, through numbers. Okay, y'all ready? Okay, I just showed you one of God's princes burning. I'm going to take this and we're going to put him right in there again. So that's a prince of God. And the reason they, they, they did it like this with frame, flames is because it's in the sense of blazing, just like out of the Bible. So that's a blazing star. And that's what's in the center of the kelepot. Okay, get ready, folks. Here's where things come off the rail. Okay, ready? My friend Billy called me this morning because Billy's learned to understand their symbology and the way they communicate. They use numbers, and they use numbers from the Bible. They take numbers, then they use numbers that are reflected in the Bible for what they're doing. That's why I can type in Strong's Concordance to a lot of the numbers they use in my video, and they're perfect, showing the serpent as God of this world. Watch this. They also use, like, latitudinal and longitudinal lines. Do you believe that? You know, like Stonehenge, the latitude and the longitude, everything's significant. Let me show you where the Burning Man Festival is taking place. Okay, let's go down here to the bottom, and let's look at the Burning Man Festival and where it's taking place. Okay, so Burning Man is taking place, and here's, here's the setup for the Burning Man. When you go to Burning Man, this is the setup for everybody that goes and parks their campers and tents, they're set up in this. This is the map for Burning Man. Just take a look at that for a second. This is the Burning Man map right here. It's in Black Rock City. It's this temporary thing that they do in the desert. Well, let me show you what the latitudinal and longitudinal lines are for that. Okay. 40 and 119 right there. 40 and 119. Okay, those are the longitudinal and latitudinal lines of Black Rock City, Nevada, in the desert. Okay, isn't it interesting? It's Black Rock City. Did you know the Citra Acra is the black light? Okay, watch this. Let me look at look at these serpents right here on the Citra Acra. Do you notice anything similar? <laughs> Do you notice anything? Kind of similar to uh, the map <laughs> that's laid out for the Burning Man Festival, which they burn right in the middle. Just sit tight. We're going to keep going. Here we go. Okay, so do y'all remember what the Hebrew number is in Genesis 1 for man? Here you go. I'll show you. So Elohim created man. Look. Adam, it means, look, the word is Hebrew word 120, see it? It's Hebrew 120, it means ruddy, a human being, hypocrite, but the word is man. See right here? So Elohim created man, Hebrew word 120. Now don't forget, we're going to look, we're looking at the latitudinal and longitudinal nines of the burning man Pagan party in the desert at Black Rock, okay? Burning man, you know, like I just showed you in the Bible. But the, the word for man right here is Hebrew word 120. But 
what was what was the latitudinal and longitudinal lines? It was 40 by 119. Okay, well let's look up let's look up 119 in Hebrew right there. Oh, it's the same word, man. Hebrew word 119 to show blood in the face that is flushed to turn rosy, be made ruddy. See right there? It's the same word, Adam, Adam. See it? I'm not making this up. This is not, you are looking at actual empirical data. The latitudinal and longitudinal lines of burning man is burning Adam. Right there. Thank you, Billy. Look at that. It says, in Genesis, so God created man. It's Hebrew word 120. The word is Adam, see? The word for man in Hebrew is Adam, Adam. Okay, it means human being, ruddy. That is human being, hypocrite. And if you go to 119, it is the same word, Adam. To show blood in the face, red, flesh, rosy, it means man right there. It's the same word, Adam. Oh, the burning Adam, the burning Adam, burning Adam. I'm going to say it like it is, Adam. Let's go to the word Adam in Genesis 3. So when the Lord God's talking to Adam, and Adam called his name Hava, look at the word Adam. It's Hebrew word 121. The same as 120. The same as 120. Oh, wow. They're all the same. I wonder what the odds are of that. <laughs> oh, gee, I wonder. <laughs> well, let's look up the number 40. <laughs> let's look up the number 40, huh? Let me see. So it's at 119, which means Adam, and the number 40. I have it in the show notes right here. And the number 40 means Abimelech, which means father is king, a Philistine. Oh, you mean like the Philistines where David went up against Goliath, the, the giant Philistine. They're saying their father is the king. And they're burning Adam. <laughs> Wait, it gets lots better. It gets so much better. Are y'all going like, ah, yeah, it's a big pagan party in the middle of the desert in Black Rock where they're burning at them. Woo because that's what got the whole system started. Got to have a host body to burn up all those angels, guys. <laughs> I'm so messed up. Holy crap, this is insane. Yes, it is. It gets better. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go. Let, let, let me show you this part real quick. Okay, let's see. Uh, there's just so much to show you. This is the layout right here for the Burning Man Festival. Did you know that crescent moon is the same as a uterus? I, I don't know if you all know this, but if you look up the symbology of the crescent moon, go do it on your own. I've done it so much. I, I just don't want to waste a bunch of time. It means the uterus. It also means the phases of a woman's menstrual cycle. That's what the crescent moon has to do with. That's why they use it. You'll find it under the images of the virgin and all over the place. Okay, so you see the crescent moon right there? This is from the Burning Man site. I took this off Burning Man. I took this off Burning Man, Black Rock City, 1999. This is, these are different maps. And right in the middle, they burn the man. Oh, my gosh, does that remind you of something that we just looked at? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's what they're burning in the middle. Oh, my gosh. It's a big pagan party where they're burning. They burn the man because what's inside of him? We are. That's <laughs> so crazy. <gasps> oh, yeah. It's no, it's no joke. So, yeah, the burning man. See, it says, right, because this is where they burn the effigy of the human. And so 
they burned up the twin system, which is the male-female energy system. Now watch this. So let me show you one of the effigies from the Burning Man Festival. Now, here you go. So here is an aerial view from Google Earth. This is aerial view from Google Earth. That is the actual group of people that are all gathered there. That's them. This is all of them gathered together. And this is where they burn the effigy of a man. <laughs> it's like, what? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Seriously. Yeah, that's where they burn the effigy. <laughs> yeah, this is no joke. And it's a Citra Acra. Oh, my gosh. Look at the shape. It's the same thing as a Citra Acra. Oh, my gosh. It's the Hindecagram in the middle. That's what they're doing. They're burning man in the Hindecagram in the middle of the Citra Acra. <gasps> ah, yeah, it's true. It's all true. It's so crazy. Okay, let me let me help you wrap your brain around this. Let's go nice and slow. Okay, let's go slow. Okay, so here is the map for Burning Man. Here is the actual people that are there at Burning Man. What do they burn in the middle? This is what they burn. You know what? Let me click on it. I'll go like this. I'll click on this, and then I'll grab this. So what do they burn in the middle of their big campfire? <laughs> That's what they burn. Oh, the shape of their, look, the shape of of, the, of all the people is the Citra Acra. <laughs> ah! Oh, my Lord, you got to be kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's true. So now this year, guess what's in the middle of, guess what's in the middle of their outline, which is the Citra Acra, the, the realm of evil from the other side. See, this is all, <laughs> this is unbelievable. <gasps> okay, so let me show you what I did. Let me just show you the Citra Acra real quick. So here's the Citra Acra. It's got the two heads opposing, you know, the opposing heads of the, of the dragon. They're, they're going opposite directions, but they're meeting in the middle. Okay, now y'all remember in the Bible it says angels that sinned were cast into everlasting chains of darkness. Angels that went after strange flesh and abandoned their own abode. They have been cast into chains of everlasting darkness awaiting judgment of the great day. Okay, so here we go. So Jude 1.6, Everlasting Chains of Darkness. Here's, you see the star in the middle of this transmutation. There's a dragon going one way, dragon going the other way. Let's look at Mayans and Aztecs. There's, look, there's a dragon going one direction, going the other direction. There's forward, there's backwards. I wrote Chains of Darkness because that's exactly what your Serpent's Giz is. That's why the Targum says, and the Lord God made to Adam and his wife vestures of honor from the skin of the serpent, chains of darkness. See the chains of darkness? Ligaments, that's why they have opposing serpents going forward and going backwards. Just like the Bible says, forward and back, backwards, ligaments of the body, serpent flesh. There it is. So there, you're looking right at it. So there is a serpent facing one way, forward, there's one facing the other way, backwards. And if you just straightened them out and went in a circle, they would be facing each other like the Citra Acra. And the two together, this dragon's profile with this dragon's profile makes the face of one dragon. And the two together make one. That's when all hell's going to be unleashed, when that thing comes together as one. And that's when God's spirit's taken out of the way. So now we know. Let me show you the new coins that are being made in Latvia. Okay, here are the new coins that are being produced in Latvia. Okay, ready? Though This is a row of coins. That's a honeycomb, folks. Let me show you what that row of coins turns into. It's a $5 euro from Latvia. Let me show you that. Here it is right there. You see it? You see this? Cell up here in this one that's closed. Okay, there, look. Just connect the dots. It's the inside of a transmutation circle. So what's inside the what's inside the kelepot? 
You know what? Here's what's inside the kelepot. Watch this. What's inside the kelepot is a right side up, upside down triangle. And what's in the dead center? A star that's being transmuted. Oh my gosh, that's what the new coin is from Latvia. It's the same thing. <laughs> hey, there it is. So there it is. See, that's the middle of a transmutation circle. And what are they transmuting? The star that's in the middle. Oh my gosh, did y'all know that's what's on your dollar bill also? Everyone thinks they've got the dollar bill all figured out. Let me show you. They don't have it figured out at all. Let me show you what it is. Okay, here's the dollar bill. You see the eagle right there? E pluribus unum. You see that right there? Oh my gosh. Is that is that the same? Is that identical? Oh my gosh, it is. It's identical to the new five dollar euro. All you gotta do is connect the dots and it makes the center of the transmutation circle right there. It's all the same, I told you. And it says e pluribus many out of one. Oh, and Genesis Genesis 126. Let us, many, that's one, create man in our representative figure, especially an idol. <laughs> hey, stacker. <laughs> Double hey, stacker. Y'all are down. It's over. Oh, yeah, this is solved. Now watch. Just hang on. Let me get this. Okay, guys, I got to jump over here real quick for one sec. I, I got to go find something real quick. Real quick, here's Burning Man. Okay, this is the, so these are all the layout right here, all here. This is the layout inside the pentagram, see? It's all laid out within the pentagram, and this is the layout for the Burning Man. And where do you burn the man? Where do you burn him? You burn him right here in the dead center of the pentagram. Told you. <laughs> There's the other one I told you. See, cent look, center camp. There you go. Again. And this is where they burn the effigy of the human. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now let me get rid of that. And then here is here's an aerial views of the place all laid out. And yeah, here's here's a interesting photo. I can see doing that if I was still back in my pagan lifestyle. That's what I would have been doing, skydiving into it. And there it is. There is the and look at the big pentagram. See the big pentagram laid out on the ground? They got it all laid out. And there the guy is skydiving into it. Absolutely crazy. There you go. I'm gonna save that image. Hang on. I want to save that. All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, you can't make this stuff up. Okay. Hang on, folks. Let's see. Oh. So I got a little glitch going on. Okay. So I want you to try and wrap your brain around this. The kelepot, the hindecogram is the kelepot. Hindecogram is an 11-pointed star that is called the kelepot, which is your host body. Inside the dead center of that, that image that is used to, as that's metaphorical for your body, is a right side up and upside down triangle that makes a, that makes a hexagram. And in the middle of that is a star which represents you, like Alice in Chains, nobility in Chains. That's you. So you're trapped inside this shell and you're being transmuted into something else. Now, the U.S. currency is the same thing as the inside of a hindecogram. So is the new Latvia coin. That's a damn, it's a, it's a honeycomb. What's coming out of the pit? A bunch of bugs. What's in the Vatican? A bunch of honeycombs. 
above harvesting semen. Watch this. Okay. There is no doubt that the center of a kelopot is a right side up, upside down triangle with a star in the middle. Here is the new Latvian coin. Right side up, upside down uh, triangle. And then what's in the middle? It's a representation of that. That's exactly what it is. Because that hive thing is taking over. Now, on the U.S. dollar bill, above the eagle, it says e pluribus unum. There it is. Right there, see? E pluribus unum. Many out of one. Elohim. Watch this. You see the triangle there? Right side up, upside down triangle. So every star is connected and there's one left in the middle. That's the center of a hindagogram. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. Hang on one sec. Ready? Watch this. It says a newit coeptus. Okay. Uh, uh, you know what? Let's look at. I'm sorry. One sec. We're gonna, okay. We're gonna look at the language that's that's around the the great seal. And the, there is the word Anuit Coeptis Novus Ordus Seclorum by the by the pyramid, and over here it's many out of one, which is their system. Now watch. Okay, here we go. Originally, it wasn't Anuit Coeptis, and it wasn't Novus Ordus Seclorum. Originally, it was Dio Favente, and it was Parenis. Okay. And what it meant was, Perennis meant the eye of providence. Okay, so right here. Uh, and Dio Favente, which alludes to the eye in the arms, meant, I'm sorry, the eye of providence right here. Dio Favente, which alludes to the eye in the arms, meant eye of providence. Okay, and Perennis meant everlasting. So this is what the great seal used to be. But watch, they changed it from Dio Favente to Anuit Coeptis. And watch this. Thompson's intent was to find a phrase that contained exactly 13 letters to fit the theme of the seal. So see, they changed the lettering uh, Perennis and Dio Favente. They changed it because... Thompson's intent was to find a phrase that contained exactly 13 letters to fit the theme of the seal. On the obverse was e pluribus unum, out of many, one. And then, thir which is also 13 letters, along with 13 stars, which I just showed you. 13 horizontal stripes on the shield on the back of the $1 bill. 13 vertical stripes, 13 arrows, 13 olive leaves, and 13 olives. Uh, the first, um, okay, uh, here we go, I'm sorry. Under the motto, Anuit Coeptus has 13 layers. Okay, so obviously they changed all the lettering and all the symbology the eagle holding 13 arrows, holding th branches that have 13 leaves. It's got 13 olives, 13 stars, 13, 13, 13, 13, and 13. Do you think the number 13 is important to them? Uh, probably. Let's see what the number 13 means in the Bible. Okay, the number 13 in the Bible is symbolic rebellion and lawlessness because they want it out from the Lord God. Nimrod, the mighty hunter who was, quote, before the Lord, meaning he tried to take the place of God, Genesis 10.9, was the 13th in Ham's line. Ham was one of Noah's three sons who survived the flood. 13 represents all the governments created by men, inspired by Satan, in outright rebellion against the eternal God, e pluribus unum, outright rebellion against God, many in one, 
outright rebellion against God. That's what our dollar bill represents, outright rebellion against the Lord God. And it's got a transmutation circle showing all the angels that rebelled that are transmuting all the angels that got caught in the snare. Wow. Wow. And it's the all-seeing eye of Lucifer, the other eye. Because there's one good and there's one bad. And then let's your eye is single. And the Bible says formed as a union. Then your whole body's full of light. If your eye be single, it means to form a union. But if your eye is evil, whole body's full of darkness. Wow. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah. So that's not arguable. That's not arguable. That's not arguable, and it's certainly not arguable that the same darn thing that's over that eagle right there is the same darn thing that the new hive Euro 5 Euro coin is, which is a honeycomb. Wow. How about that? Now let's get to the Citra Acra. <laughs> okay, so... Here we go. I'll tell you what. I'm going to take like a little break. I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to eat some lunch. And then after I eat lunch, I'll probably rinse off. And then I'm going to come pick this up again. We're going to do the Citra Acra. And then um, we're going to do the, you know, the shape of, the shape of uh, the layout at the Burning Man Festival which is the tree of life this year, which happens to be the endecagram. <laughs> you can't even think this stuff up. Uh, we're going to, we're going to show you how it's identical to the United Nations, almost every courtroom in the world. I mean, in the United States that I've seen. And if you guys want to look while I'm gone, you can go look at this, go down to the very bottom and I'll give you the quick going over. I went ahead and I took, uh, see the sit look. See the temple of the black light. If the light that's in you be darkness, how great the darkness! Because the light in us that's in us is darkness. See that because this is what th this is the system that's wrapped around the host body. We're trapped within this. The temple of the black light. That's what we're in. <laughs> Our bodies are darkness. Darkness shall grow, cover the earth, and gross darkness the people of the earth. So that's the system that we're in. We're trapped in darkness. Uh, come out of the darkness in the light. Glad I wear. <laughs> okay, so look. I'm going to take these two dragons, all right? And I'm going to take this hindecagram right there, and I'm just going to put it in there because that's what it represents. That's what it is right there, okay? And what what's being burned right in the center? What's being burned is one of us. Okay, so now... Let's just take those two dragons right there. And uh, I just got a bracelet that's the same. And we're just going to take, we're just going to take the whole uh, Burning Man Festival. There we go. We'll take the Burning Man Festival right here. And we'll just put it right in there. There you go. That's what's up. So remember the everlasting chains of darkness, forward and backwards ligaments of the body. So, I took the guy from the Vatican. Remember that guy from the Vatican? Remember that guy that's in the chains in the Vatican? When you turn him upside down, he becomes a, uh, you know, he becomes a locust from the pit. There you go. That's what's up. And see, the whole layout is in the shape of the Citra Acra. <laughs> and they literally burn a person right in the middle right there. Uh, it's insane. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call Dave. I'm going to make a few more pictures for this folder just for visual representation. So just... <laughs> so now we've destroyed the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is, it's real. It's very, very real. It's witchcraft at its finest. I mean, it is. This is witchcraft 
at his very best. Because they're literally taking angels and converting them to food for another race in the pits. And that's why we're led astray. Come on, go with me. Yeah, man, let's go to the Burning Man Festival. Lots of hot chicks, man. We'll do lots of drugs. And, you know, everybody will have sex with chicks they don't know. It'll be awesome. <laughs> it's like stupid. Oh, we got carried away to Stupidville. Uh, are you embarrassed yet? I'm embarrassed. It's like. What a mighty God we serve. Okay, I'm going to take a little break. Got to grab some lunch, guys. Feel a little bit worn out. Anyway, you know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to replay the short little video on Burning Man. Let's do that. Let's replay that. There we go. The Tree of Life is a 110-foot monument to nature. It is a center for creativity, knowledge sharing, and healing that has a life after Burning Man. The goal of this project is to be the home of art and performance that inspires social and environmental change. And trees grow and incorporated natural principles of Fibonacci into the main structure. This gave us a repetition in the angles, which made it possible to construct in modules that can be pre-assembled. The design is split into four parts. There's a main structure made out of glue laminated timber and metal connectors, a walkway that takes you from the outside of the tree to a temple space at the top, a fabric facade with two faces incorporated, and branches and leaves that forms a canopy for light shows and projections.
All right, so I am playing these things repetitively because I want this to sink in. I want you guys to go. I want you to understand this is definitive. This is conclusive. This is demonstrable. It's easily demonstrated. I can demonstrate it repetitively over and over and over and over again. Back to the scriptures. Back to the scriptures. The human host body is a, is a joke. The joke's on us. If you thought you got a good deal, you got screwed. The human host body is, is a trap. It's a snare that the devil can access us and transmute us, turn us into food. Well, when I say the devil, we are the devil, folks. We are the devil. You want to see the devil? Look in the mirror. But God, the Bible says, while you were yet my enemies, I saved you. That's what Jesus said. While you were yet my enemies, I saved you. Who's his enemy? The devil. So he saves his own enemies. That's true love. Jesus said, love your enemies. That's why I, I'm here to help everyone, even the people that hate me, and there are a lot of them. I've tried to reason with them, but I've come to realize there's an old saying, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. I don't reason with them anymore. I just block them. My information's there. I, the, the information, when I say my, let me retract that word. The information the Lord God has given to me to give to you, I am a conduit. No one could come up with this data, guys. Nobody. I can tie it all together. I can tie the U.S. currency to the Citra Acra. I can tie it to the Hindecogram, to the Kelepot. I can tie E Pluribus Unum to the Bible. I can tie all of it together. Who could do that? Because there's common denominators. And the common denominators fit perfectly. It's because the Lord allowed me to do it because this is the end of the world. In the end, everything secret will be made public. Now I'm going to show you one more video that I did quite a while back because I want to refresh your memory. I want to refresh your memory. Genesis 1, verse 2. And the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of Elohim, moved over the semen. Genesis 1, 26. Elohim said... E pluribus unum minion one, let us create man in our representative figure, especially an idol. What's a calipot? It's an it's inherently evil and it's housing holiness that has been exiled within that calipot. Therefore it is synonymous with idolatry. Because the human host body is an idol. From the beginning it's not arguable it's proven now using the Word of God okay let me show you one other video real quick okay and the earth was without form void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit it's Ruach it is not the word Numa it is Ruach and it is not the Holy Spirit that is Numa uh, and means wind by resemblance breath Okay, I'll, this is interesting. Unsubstantiability. Interesting. Okay, so the spirit, the Ruach of Elohim, God's angels, magistrates. And again, that is the cumulative sum of them, many in one. The spirit of God moved upon the face as the part that turns, think forward and backwards. Of the waters, semen moved over the face of the semen. Now, let me show you. Let me show you this video. See the semen? <clears throat> I had Dave produce this video to where that semen comes right through the altar that's in St. Peter's Basilica because that entire sheep is the spirit of Elohim moving over the semen. That's what the whole altar is. It's a bunch of angels, Elohim, the cumulative sum of those God's angels, magistrates, Elohim moving over the semen. That's why it's semen flowing down the side of the St. Peter's chair, which is a penis. 
and the whole thing's a vagina. I mean, you couldn't even think this stuff up. And it's perfect, by the way. It's absolute perfection in data. Absolute perfection in data. Anyone who wants to argue with this is delusional. Okay, I'm going to pause it there for a minute now. What I'm going to do right now is I see I see an opportunity to add some pictures to the folder that I'm working on right now. And again, guys, I've been digesting this for the last 48 hours. My mind is blown, blown, completely blown. We've got it. I mean, we've got the, the mystery of everything, mystery of who we are, why we're here. What's going to happen when we die? What happens if you die apart from God? If you die separated from God? I mean, this is how to get, you know, how to get back home. Unless you make the things of the right hand as those of left, those of left as those of right, those above as those below, you will have no knowledge of the kingdom of heaven. That means if you haven't turned things upside down, you've never seen the kingdom. You've never even realized you were a slave. That was the first thing the Lord had me do was the very first communication was to, to for him to show me the paradigm shift. To see the truth, you have to turn everything upside down. That was the very first communication from the Lord God. And here I am 16 years later, 
on the same exact platform? What are you crazy? I mean, there's no way. It's perfection. Perfection. There's just no way. <laughs> so overwhelming, isn't it? Is this overwhelming or is it overwhelming? <gasps> It's like you want to laugh, you want to cry, you want to run down the street, hitting symbols, freaking out. I mean, this is unbelievable stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Dave uh, use a program and help me like make some images that make the visual conceptualization very easy for you. And then, my gosh, man, I need to I need to find a way to get this into a body of work that is completely edited. This is just this should be like a 10 hour DVD of all this data. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, yeah, I just, at this point, I'm just. Okay, I'm going to take my little break. I'm going to work with Dave. I'm going to come sit back down here and then get it all done. All right. Okay, let's go over very quickly what we do know. Okay, we know that in New York, there's a statue that's called the Statue of Liberty. And guys, we're going to go through this folder just kind of quickly. I'm going to show you all this stuff. I'm just going to scroll down, find each picture. Here we go. Statue of Liberty. And it's called the Mother of Exiles. And she's holding in her hand. She's holding in her hand. Well, that's weird. In her hand, she's holding a torch. And the base of the torch is a male penis. We also know that the poem for the Statue of Liberty is that who, it says, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning. We also know that the Bible said, Jesus said, he will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And the word fire is literally translates as lightning. So she holds the imprisoned lightning. We know from Genesis 2 or Genesis 1 verse 2 that the spirit of Elohim, e pluribus unum, Many in one, bunch of gods, angels, magistrates moved over the semen. We know that these are facts. These are not, uh, this is not my opinion. These are facts. Let's see, why is this thing not moving? That's very strange. Okay. So again, so see the spirit of Elohim moved over the semen. So that's the imprisoned lightning. Here she is holding the imprisoned lightning, which is being turned to semen. The Statue of Liberty is standing on top of an 11-pointed star, which is called a hindecogram. Let's look at that very quickly. A hindecogram is called, hang on one sec. Here we go. The Statue of Liberty is on top of an 11-pointed star. An 11-pointed star is called a hindecogram. A hindecogram is a kelepot, and a kelepot is a shell, a peel, or a husk. It is inherently evil, housing the essence of holiness, and the essence of holiness that it's housing is directly there in the middle, and it's one of God's angels. There is the essence of holiness that's being housed in the middle, and it's trapped in a right-side-up, upside-down paradigm, which is the, the flesh body that you're trapped in, and that is called the kelepot. We know that the kelepot... Uh, in Jewish cosmology are synonymous uh, with idolatry because they are inherently evil. So we know the host body system in the Kabbalah uh, is called the Kelepot and it's inherently evil and it is synonymous with idolatry. We know that in Genesis 126, Elohim said, Elohim is God's angels, magistrate said, let us create man in our representative figure, especially an idol. That is not the Lord God creating man in Genesis 1. That is Elohim. The Lord God created Adam in Genesis 2 in order to fulfill the obligation of everybody getting the host body they, that they wanted to get. Okay, we also know that the kelepot right there that is housing the essence of holiness is, and, I, and I'm going to read the definition because I want to make sure I read the definition we know that the kelepot literally means pill, shell, or husk, and they are the representation of evil or impure spiritual forces, um, which are the polar opposites of the emanations of God. So 
the the host body system is the opposite of the emanations of God, and that realm of evil is known as the Sitra Akra, and it's called the other side. So we know that the host body system is a, a representation of the Sitra Akra. The Sitra Akra is made manifest by two serpents in opposing directions. That's why it says in the Bible, uh, in Jude, angels that abandoned their own abode and left their own habitation, he is kept in everlasting chains, awaiting the judgment of the great day. Sorry, it, this thing went back too far. Uh, and we know that those everlasting chains mean forward and backwards ligaments of the body. That's what it translates to. So according to the Bible, the everlasting chains of darkness are forward and backwards ligaments of the body. That's what the everlasting chains are. So we just use the Bible and proved the everlasting chains are the host body system. Okay, you don't get out of it. And unless you get converted while you're inside of it, you don't get to go back home. And that's all there is to it. That's been solved. Jude 1, 6, everlasting chains. Forward and backwards, uh, ligaments of the body. That's why all these cultures, they have opposing serpents. A serpent going one way forward and a serpent going another way. Everlasting chains of darkness. Very common. Here is a, a amulet of the Sitra Akra. These are serpents or dragons going opposite directions. And the two together make one. So it's two and one. Domino's Pizza. There you go. Uh, we also know that uh, the Kelepot is a transmutation device. And it literally says... The Kelepotic tree consists of 10 spheres that are in opposition to the emanations of God on the tree of life right here, which is really the tree of death. Uh, it's the host body system. It's really death. These are referred to as evil twins. They are also evil demons of matter, and they are the shells of the dead. So the host body system, according to Kabbalah, is called the shells of the dead. And the dead means God's children that fell and got trapped in them. And that's true. That's why the Bible says, Arise, O sleeper, wake up from the dead. Now the Bible is making total sense in every aspect. We also know that the that in Europe, they're producing a coin now, which is in the shape of a honeycomb. And when you connect the vertices, it makes a right side up, upside down uh, star with a hexagram in the middle. And all you have to do is put a star in the middle, and it is exactly the same. I'm sorry. It's exactly the same as the stars that are above the eagle and the $1 bill that says E Pluribus Unum. That relates to uh, Elohim. They are many in one. E Pluribus Unum, many out of one. And so that's what that represents. That's why there's 13 arrows, 13 leaves, 13 olives, 13 stripes, 13 stripes, 13 letters in the words. And that's why 13 is a number of complete rebellion against God. And it represents all the, go all the governments of the world that are under Satan's control. Here is the book of Sitra Akra. It is an 11-pointed star. They've replaced the vertices with serpent heads. You know what? Let me see. I'll take this over here and I'll put it right there. So you can see that instead of vertices, there are serpent heads now um, instead of vertices on like triangles. So I just put that there. So that represents the flesh that is surrounding the angel that's been caught in the trap. And I'll go down and show you a representation of what Dave and I did. So here is exactly what it is. You are the star. You are a representation of this star in the sense of blazing there is a star that is surrounded by the citra akra the realm of the other side the kelepot the host body system that's you in the dead center of the star unless your eye becomes single uh if the eye becomes single you're full of light it means union you have to turn one upside down to see everything this is proven out now folks look at it look at the symbology Look how perfect it is. Now we also know that the Sitra Akra, uh, the two serpents in opposing directions. Let me show you this. 
these two serpents that are in opposing directions right here, they are in the same uh, physical outlay as as the uh, there, as the Burning Man festival. There it is. Uh, that's I can get a better image than that. But you see the serpents going in the semicircle, head of the serpent, head of the serpent, making a semicircle. It is literally identical to this. Let me see. There it is. That's exactly what it is. Busted. This is a complete bust, people. There it is. And that's crowning the darkness and crowning the host body system. And that's what Lucifer rules over. There it is. That's why the Citra Acra is in that shape. Okay, now I told you, you're going to find that in most courtrooms. You're going to find that in the United Nations. Let me show you the United Nations assembly. There you go, right here. So here's the United Nations assembly. Look right there. It's no different than Burning Man. It's no different than Citra Acra. Uh, let me show it to you. And that represents the wheat and the weeds tied together, opposing directions. Watch. Let me grab, I will grab this. I'll click on that and I'll grab this. Okay, there you go. United Nations, it's the same exact thing. There you go. Told you. United Nations, same exact thing. Exactly the same thing. Makes me interested. I wonder what's in dead center of the United Nations. Again, the Burning Man Festival, the Burning Man Festival, latitude and longitude, sorry, I'm getting really excited. <laughs> latitude and longitude is 119 and 40. 119 in the Bible is man, Adam, Adam. Uh, 40 is Abimelech, the a Philistine king, Philistines. That, I mean, this is just a no-brainer now. So here is the out. Uh, here is the um, orientation of the Burning Man Festival, and I had Dave just cut out and put in the middle. The got the effigies that they burn in the middle. Now they're just burning the Tree of Life. It's going to be burned this year. They burned the man all by himself. This was several years ago in 2016 that they burned the man and the woman, and. Now they're going to burn the tree of life in the middle. There it is. And it's in Black Rock City. There you go. So this has been proven now. We can take all this stuff and tie it all together. I'm going to try and redo this again in another very calm, cool, collected way. Because this is so exciting for me. This is the mystery of everything solved. That's why... You know, look, let's take a, let's take a, the guy from the Vatican that's in the slave collar. Well, we know that the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of the kelepot. So, see, you take the guy that's in the slave collar and you put him in here. Well, what happens to this guy when you turn him upside down? He turns into a locust from the pit, right? So let's let's go up. Let's go up and look at look at this. Watch. We'll go up here and. The mother of exiles, that's why, that's why this image right here, it says the most dangerous place in the world is between a mother and her children. That's why she's holding the bug. She is the mother of all the bugs, all the locusts that are going to come out of the pit. They like to use images of cicadas because cicadas, uh, they mature underground. Just like that race of beans that's coming out of the pit, they mature underground. This is a common theme now. We have the same theme over and over and over again. Here's a guy with an image of a tattoo of the Virgin on his back. You turn it upside down. It's a bug. I, I, proboscis. It's easy to see. I, I, proboscis. There's also the vagina right in the middle. It's, this is solved, folks. This is solved. So she's the mother of the exiles, and she becomes the mother of all the locusts that are coming out of the pit. Uh, the Eve is the mother of all of them. I mean, that's just crazy. Let's see. Let's keep going. 
Twin Tower is a representation of the twin system being burned. And in its place, they're putting the new one world system. When you put a human that in the center, when you put in the center of a, a calipot, the human, the human system, you have one of God's angels that's trapped in there. This is the condition of one of God's angels because the human host body are those chains of darkness. So here he is in the chains of darkness. There's the guy in the chains of darkness from the Vatican. Let's turn it upside down and let's transmute this guy into what he's supposed to be. So all we have to do to do that is you turn the star upside down, which is one of God's angels. And when you turn that star upside down, what does it become? It becomes a locust in the pit. This is solved. That's why the Statue of Liberty, that picture I showed you, it says the most dangerous place between it, um, is between a mother and her children. Shows her holding a bug. There it is. We've this is solved. The Lord has allowed me to solve the mystery of everything, literally. Okay, here's another one. Let me take this. I'm going to. I'm going to take this. Okay, this falcon pendant. It's really a fiery flying serpent. Let me show you what it is. That that face right there. It's a vampiric face. There's the eye. There's the eye. There's the fang. There's the fang. And that's the open mouth. Okay, that is the same as the layout for Burning Man. See it? So we'll take the falcon from ancient Egypt. And we'll just go down here. We'll go down here to Burning Man. And I'll show you the falcon. And the falcon is the same as... There it is. It's all the same. It's all the same thing. And the way that it was all resolved was the Statue of Liberty. And that's the way the Lord led me through all the steps to get to all the data. Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So the Lord led me to all this data. It's supernatural. It's not natural. All glory to God. I'm going to refine this presentation. I just wanted to get this out because I've been sitting on it for two days. So I'm going to refine the presentation and maybe talk to someone about editing like a super cool video where all this just gets done without me screencasting it. I'll see if I can get that done. I've got a lot on my plate right now, folks. There's a lot going on. Wow. <laughs> burning Man. Give me a break. <laughs> the Burning Man Festival. I get it because you're burning us up as fuel here's the united nations assembly hall by the way right here unbelievable look what's on the ceiling <laughs> yeah this is some crazy crazy stuff unbelievable let me just see if i missed anything there's a lot of stuff in here folks that's why this young lady is wearing a shirt that says Hunter in Training. Why would she be wearing that shirt? Unless it's true. There you go. Hunter in Training. Because we're all led astray. Fornication is a sin against God. Unless you've repented from all fornication, you are in trouble. Yep. Repent, folks. Jesus said, if you, if you don't repent, you will all likewise perish. Here is a really disturbing uh, piece of artwork from the Burning Man, and it's exactly correct. It's, uh, it's cages of opposing faces, just like the Tree of Life that for this year they had on the trunk op opposing faces, male and female, and there is a little one trapped in each one. And they're trapped. That's right. Unless you become his little children, you'll never see the kingdom of heaven. This is solved. Here is the, here is, this is the symbology for the Burning Man Festival. And it's, it's making fun of the fact that they burn all the male energy. Because here's the female. And here's a symbol of the man in the fire. And let me show you something absolutely astounding. I saw at the Burning Man um, 2018, I believe. 
or at least uh, I think it was 2018. Let me show you some of the tents they had set up. Uh, there you go. If you take a look at all these tent setups, see all these? This is in one section. The top of every one of those tents is right here. Look, look what the top is. And by the way, you know it's burning, man, because there's a symbol on the truck that is setting them up. Look at the tents. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have hexagons. All the tents are hexagons. Think about that for a second. Hexagon, hexagon. Does that look like a hive? Does that look like the new coin from Latvia? You better believe it. There's a race of beans that are coming out of the fit, folks. All right, I'm just going to stop this video and let it fly right now. I don't want to get too detailed. I've given you the bulk. Uh, Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley, transmutation body of the shadow of death. Death. I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. There it is. I mean, unless your eye be single, union, the whole body is... If your eye be single, your whole body is full of light. The word sing, uh, single means union, to form as a union. So see, all this is proven out now, all of it. Everything I've been showing y'all has proven out now to be completely and utterly true according to the Word of God. It all goes straight back to the Bible. So we use the Bible to prove that Jewish Kabbalah is literally a satanic um, religion. Uh, Catholicism is a satanic religion. All religions are satanic. All of them are, except the indwelling spirit of Christ. Everything else, satanic. There it is. All right, guys. God bless.